Come on in, chefs. Find a station, find a station. Welcome back to Mitchell Hall. Every day, the pressure is rising and it gets harder and harder to not only beat out the peers next to you, but also to watch one of them leave. I know it was hard for me and you all to see Chef Rhea and her wonderful personality walk out of this top vegan kitchen yesterday, but such is the life in a plant-eat-plant -plant world like the top vegan kitchen. Eggs, milk, butter, the staples of almost every dessert in America, and an absolute nightmare for any vegan reading an ingredient list. Now, as you can tell by looking at me, I found some workarounds for finding great vegan desserts. So for today's challenge, there'll be 75 minutes to create a stunning plant-based dessert that'll show everyone in America and across the world that you don't have to give up your favorite sweet indulgences to go vegan. And to help me judge today's vegan dessert challenge is the executive pastry chef of The Crest, The Market and Italian Village, Hoofhearted Brewery, and is now the director of operation for Alchemy Brands. Please give a round of applause for Chef Aaron Klaus. Welcome, Hello. welcome, Good morning. Chef. Thank you so much for joining us. I know Thank you're you. a busy guy. <laughs> Thanks for squeezing us into your schedule. No problem. So today's uh, challenge is vegan desserts. And as an executive pastry chef, what do you find as the best building blocks for a great dessert dish? Yeah, so I'm all about textures. Texture is my biggest thing, um, especially when it comes to vegan desserts. The use of different flours like, can really, really make or break a vegan dessert, especially since you're recreating you know, the lack of butter, the lack of eggs. So I think that it's you know, extremely creative, building on the texture, building on the flavors. I'm just, I'm excited to see what everybody comes up with today. All right, chefs, you're gonna have 75 minutes to present Chef Aaron and I with an amazing vegan dessert. Use your time wisely, put your focus to one plate, and that time starts now. It always goes fine. Oh, it's okay. Everyone was a little nervous about the baking one because of the time constraints. But yeah, I 100% feel like I belong here. Dessert just may be my demise, so we'll see. Okay, powdered sugar. Anybody see powdered sugar? I mean, I've always been intimidated by baking because baking is such a science to it. This is a blast. This is like a dream come true, bucket list. Never thought I would do it, so I'm just happy to be here. I actually love baking. Um, before I went vegan, that was what I did most of. I didn't fall in love with the cooking aspect until going vegan. Oh, uh, make sure this is all the way on, and then this goes, this goes in front. Taking your new lemon juice. If you were put back in the, the competition series mindset, what do you think you'd try to throw together in this time frame? So for me, I would focus on like thin layers if I was doing anything baked because 75 minutes for a lot of vegan pastry is very like quick. Fifth and Najla, this one's for you. You know you up in heaven right now watching over me. I am not familiar with vegan baking, so this is my first time doing it. My God, this is the lumpiest powdered sugar I have ever seen. See, when, when I heard baking was a science, I immediately felt dejected because I remembered the kind of grades I got in high school in all my science courses, so. I failed my science classes and math was my worst and somehow 95% of my job is yelling out math equations to numbers, yeah. Anybody have the lemon juice? I have lemon juice. All right, Shanley, how are you today? Are you feeling good about your dish today? Is baking in your comfort zone? Baking is my comfort zone, but not under this time constraint. We'll see, I, I'm very excited about the dish if it comes together. I think baking is just so difficult. I mean, not only do you have to get all of the measurements a little more precise than doing a cooking challenge, but temperature is everything. When you want something to set, when sometimes you have to let it cool before you ice it. Beautiful, perfect. Thank you. Chef Chloe. Yes, sir. How are you feeling today? <laughs> You're so serious. I gotta be serious. I'm nervous. You've got 46 minutes and 29 seconds to create a stunning vegan dessert for Chef Aaron. Yeah, I'm making what, what a cake. Making a layered cake. Okay. So it's gotta cool. If I can frost it, 
Keep a cool head and hopefully we'll have a real sweet treat from you later. Yeah, hopefully. I was definitely nervous and like going so fast at the beginning. My hands are shaking, opening up my butter packs. I think we're almost good there. We're almost there. Can I steal some more oat milk, please? All right, Chef Teresa, how are you today? Um, I'm in the weeds. You're in the weeds right Borrow now? Borrow a restaurant term. I am totally, I am in the thick of it. How, how deep are you? What are we making uh, today? Well, I'll tell you what the problem is. The problem is I have never seen powdered sugar so incredibly lumpy. So now you're just sifting, 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 trying to get that texture right. And the powdered sugar was like BBs. It was these pellets that would just not dissolve. So chefs, you have 30 minutes left. I could have sworn he said 45, 20 seconds ago. I don't believe this clock. So Christian, so you have a lot of things going on. I'm very intrigued. Yes. Uh, what are you working on today? I am making a chocolate raspberry cheesecake with a homemade whipped cream. Any uh, components you're worried about today on your dish? Honestly, you know, I was ultra nervous before this started, but everything's coming together pretty nicely. So Wonderful. And, and today good. you're keeping an eye on those blenders? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got one blender today. So <laughs> and, and it's going to stay with you at all yeah, times, I'm going right? to keep this one on lock today. I do not practice this dish. And that might be my demise. Chef Noel, please, I'm, I'm getting some wonderful smells from your station over here. What are you whisking up over there? So what I'm doing is, is I'm going to do a crepe cake. That sounds fantastic. Well, and, and, I love crepe. And, and, and you said this is outside of your comfort zone oh a little gosh, bit. Oh my yes. I am not a vegan baker whatsoever. No, I actually never made a crepe a day in my life. I never made a cake a day in my life. That was quite the environment. A lot of blending, stations, an absolute wreck right now. People whisking their lives. Chef Noel, is that a grimace back there? I got some crepes going on, so I'm good. You right got now. some crepes going I on? I got some crepes going on. I'm excited. Ooh. Oh, are you okay? You yeah, your... I'm good. Did I? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I better uh, take care of that. Okay, Christian, about 15 minutes left. How are you feeling? Feeling good? Feeling pretty good. I'm a little nervous that my cheesecake isn't going to set, but I have a backup plan if it doesn't. All right. It's all yours. You can have it. You're competing, but we're also peers and hopefully friends for life after this. Just over five minutes left, chefs. I would start thinking about your plates, letting those baked components cool. You, you wait until the last minute to pull those cheesecakes? Yeah, might have to be a moose. I totally understand, dude. It's not gonna, I don't. Need more time. It's not gonna set. Business decision time. Like eerie silence, right? Yeah, now. yeah. This is, is focus. This is. I, I feel like we're transitioning into like a horror set now. You got this, man. You got it. Definitely didn't suck. How you feeling, Teresa? Done. You're done. You Want to eat it now? <laughs> Can I serve this, Noah? Let me see. Garnish Same. it some more. Yeah, I'm gonna garnish it, but like. Can you put it in a bowl and make it into a good mousse? That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to put it in yeah. a bowl. OK, chefs, one minute remaining. Cut out any elements if you have to at this point. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. Hands up. Another 75 minutes done in Mitchell Hall. How are you feeling, chefs? We don't want to talk about it. You don't want to talk about yeah, it. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> but maybe we'll taste about it. Yes. And then unfortunately, we'll have to talk about it. There was no strategy. I was just waiting for them to cool towards the end. I think if it set, it would have been like a home run. Unfortunately, people were in and out of the freezer. I think it went OK. Um, I think everyone kind of it was a little bit chaotic. We were talking in that last like 10 minutes, you could hear a pin drop in here. For some reason, when it comes to baking, we just kind of noticed it makes everybody clinch up a little bit. I don't know if it's the exact measurements we have to look for uh, or the praying that has to happen while something's baking 
cooling, finishing. I know Chef Aaron and I had a great time perusing your stations, getting uh, the aromatics of what was being put together, and we're really excited to taste your dishes. Chef, you ready to eat? I'm, I'm so hungry, I'm ready for this. Yeah, and you brought your sweet tooth? I did, I always have a sweet tooth. <laughs> Perfect. Please tell us about your dish. So today we've got a coconut salted caramel pecan butter cake. Well, it is a gorgeous looking piece of cake, and Chef, if you would like to do the honors. Now that's a professional. I have to get a, a, little, little, a little bit of that. Caramel is delicious. The slightly less sweet salted whip, incredible. The, the cake itself is really soft and sumptuous. I love the texture of the cake. Uh, cake for me, like, I don't like dry cake at all. It's like my, my biggest pet peeve in the world. Um, so I really like the moisture content of the cake. That makes me very happy. Yeah, uh, you mentioned as we were going around, you're not a pastry chef. Uh, this piece of cake, I think, begs to differ. I managed to salvage one pretty together piece, but the rest of the cake is um, no longer with us, so. Tell us about your dish. So we have a dark chocolate tart with a strawberry and raspberry compote. Should have had some strawberry and raspberry pearls on there as well, but time didn't allow. When you crunch through, there should be like a texture on a tart. So the fact that like my knife snaps and it doesn't just cut softly, that's like already my first thing that I look at. So that's awesome. And I like how you played it at like the dark side and the light side, because it's very visually pleasing to the eye. I would maybe just a touch of salt on top. Just like finishing salt, just a little bit, because this chocolate is so, naturally like so it's rich, rich, and it's delicious. So I really enjoyed it. Yeah, the texture was great, tastes were great, and the plating was um, beautiful. Even though some components didn't work out for some people, it's like how far did they try to push themselves? I think there's so many other things they're going to consider. Please describe your dish for us. The main thing is a chocolate chipotle almond uh, shortbread. It comes with a raspberry sauce as well as a cashew creme anglaise. At the first bite, it was just slightly dense, but as I mix more of that anglaise and the raspberry, you get the almonds in for texture. Yeah, I like it. I like that, th that you also used almond in multiple ways, chili in multiple ways. I like dishes where you take one ingredient and that's the star ingredient. It's like, how can I manipulate this in six different things? So I always like to see that, and I like the spice. That makes me very, like, I don't know. It's fun when you're eating desserts. That spice is something different that's unexpected. Excellent examples of different styles of cookery. You're obviously pushing yourself, and it's paying dividends. Another great dish. Started off rough, and then I gradually kind of found my groove. All right, Chef, please describe your dish for us. So you have a raspberry chocolate mousse with a uh, sweet and salty caramelized pecan over the top a coconut whipped cream. This was a slight pivot from, from plan yep. A, which, which <laughs> kind of seems to be the theme here at Mitchell Hall, There's plan A just doesn't seem to be available to everybody. Yeah, this was plan B for sure. It was supposed to be a cheesecake. Yeah, definitely some, some great flavors. Of course, we're having to adapt and edit. It, it's hard when, yeah, you're on a time limit and we can't make signs to go faster. Yeah, the textures are really nice. The fact that you have like the thickness and the richness. It's like the creaminess that you expect from the cheesecake. Finishing salt would be just, again, like bring that a little bit together. I'd like to think that my body of work would get me through, but I think that I will be in the bottom two today. Please tell us about your dish. So it's the classic crepes. I made my own strawberry preserves in the middle and also my own coconut cream based whipped cream as well too. Uh, how'd you feel? You, this is out of your wheelhouse. You're not normally a, a dessert purveyor. Like you said, this is not my normal thing. I normally cook savory dinners and stuff like that. So this is definitely pushing me beyond my comfort zone. If you lay out your crepes and like cool them down faster, when you go to do that coconut cream, you would see a little bit more of that physical cream layer. But you have enough of the strawberry and that they still stay layered. You know, it doesn't just become like one crepe. Absolutely, I think that something like this dish would fit right in line with that uh, dish you made for us on that first day. Honestly, I was so nervous when they cut into the crepe, like, oh shit, how is it gonna look when they cut into it? Is it gonna be messy? Is it gonna be great? And it was perfect. Great composure, great flavor profiles, great texture. I think everybody hit on all of the notes we were looking for. Yeah. And so if you excuse Chef Aaron and I, we'll pop out, have a little tough convo. We'll come back. He'll say some really great things to one of you. I'll say some not so great things, but we'll all still be friends after. All right, this is gonna be tough. 
Yeah. Some really, really great dessert dishes in there. Um, let's start with some of the sweeter feedback. What were some of your favorites? Yeah, so I really like Chloe's. I'm very particular towards that. The fact that she did cake and nobody else did cake. I, I was impressed with Teresa's dish. Again, she's yeah. pushing herself. There, there could have been some edits, uh, some, some more sweet, maybe some more of that cream on glaze. Shanley's tart. Yeah was really good. The texture of the tart when you cr like that. Yeah, the, the crunch of that knife hitting was excellent. That chocolate was so, so deep, so, so rich. Yeah. But yeah, a little bit of salt would have helped. Like molded it together just a touch further. Right. I think we both enjoyed Chef Noel's dish as yeah. well, the, the stack of crepes. Yeah, uh, you know. just like the quirky, fun energy from like the plate, like it just kind of it almost it had like a cake yeah. aesthetic to it with the rose next to it. What would you feel about Christian's dish? The the cheesecake turn yeah. mousse. I like the idea and I like the initial direction. I think it's just like an execution. Like he aimed for the stars. You Absolutely. Know? And like unfortunately things take a lot of time to cool. All right, well, yeah, tough deliberation, but yeah. I think we've got our, our top two and our bottom two. Yeah. Ready to get in there and, and deliver some good news and then yes. lead me to be that dark chocolate bitter <laughs> taste in everyone's mouth at the end of the day. Better you than me. Well, another tough one. Another 75 minute battle. Every day gets tougher, the group gets smaller, and we get closer to crowning our top vegan. Again, a lot of splitting hairs, diving into who checked the boxes. Um, so we had decided through our conversation that our top two for today's challenge are Chef Teresa and Chloe. Very exciting. I feel relieved. It was just a really nice flavor, um, something that maybe was a little unique and, and set me apart from other people. So yeah, both of your guys' dishes both did something a little bit different, a little bit out of the box. Tracy, your flavor profiles using the chili was super unique. Um, I really enjoyed that thought process and the fact that you know you had multiple components and how you utilize them. Um, Chloe, your cake was fantastic. The texture, the flavor, um, like the moisture content of it, everything just you know really like melded well together. Um, a lot of moving parts to each of those dishes, and you should both be very proud. Um, would you like to announce our winner for today? Yeah, so um, today's winner, uh, Chloe. That was fantastic. Um, Congratulations. It's something I would put in any of my retail cases. Like, I urge you to make it and see what you can do with it, because it was, it was fantastic. So, congratulations. Um, and again, both your flavor profiles were very unique. Um, and yeah, great job to both of you. And congratulations, Chloe, great job. Think about perfecting a few things and possibly I can sell it in some restaurants locally and in their dessert case, so we'll see, you never know. Yeah, I mean, you guys are all extremely talented, so I'm um, excited to see and meet all of you here. You know, just keep pushing. We've all picked an industry that we are all clearly, something's wrong with us, right? <laughs> it's like, it takes a special person to be in this industry, and so I just implore you to continue what you're all doing. Well, thank you very much for joining us, and I uh, hope to see you again soon, Chef. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Teresa really impressed me today. Chloe really impressed me today. Honestly, everyone's dish was stunning. Teresa, always Teresa. She's so talented. Hers was beautiful. And Noelle's was so good. Yeah, so every day the, the circle gets tighter um, and it gets harder to see any of you go. We keep getting to know each other more each day. Um, and I feel like every dish you guys put forward is another piece of your life that I'm getting to be a part of, whether it's something you um, bake very often or that you're doing sometimes for, for a very first time. And after talking with Chef Aaron, our bottom two dishes for today were Christian and Shanley. The dish that I envisioned was not what I put out to the judges. So feeling pretty low right now. Honestly. I had two or three components in my dish that I really feel like I couldn't plate or time didn't allow for me to plate. For Christian having to adapt, the cheesecake didn't set. Um, you were editing, trying to get things, trying to get those textures together. There was a lot of great flavor, a lot of great texture. Um, and for Shanley, that tart had the perfect crisp. The, the chocolate was so deep, but yeah, missing that extra salt. But after my discussions with Chef Aaron, we've decided that the chef that is no longer in the mix for Top Vegan, um, unfortunately, is Chef Christian. Um, I'm so sorry. You know, you have been one of the most consistent competitors 
laser focused every day in the competition, no matter what's happening around you. The last two days, you definitely got a bad break with some things that have happened here. Um, you know, I've accepted it because each day there's a different guest judge. So that judge doesn't know what I did the day before, you know? So based on today, um, I deserve to go home. It's gonna be tough to see you go, my man. You're a beast you. in the kitchen. Thanks I appreciate so your attitude, your effort, um, and just being a consummate professional. Things went wrong, you kept your head up, you didn't blame anyone. You just try to make a great dish. Um, and that's something we can all learn from. You know, I was very thankful for this opportunity. Um, I, th I thought that I could go farther. So let's clap him up, give him some hugs. Guys, good luck. Thank you all. Oh, my God, I've been cooking my whole life. Y'all just give me a minute, I'm sorry. That's the kitchen life. You know, it gets harder every day. Uh, we punish ourselves, pushing ourselves to make these great dishes. Um, and unfortunately, in the heat of the competition, at the end of the day, somebody's got to get burned. It was stressful today, I ain't gonna even lie. I'm like, yeah, I feel good. Mm -hmm. I feel indifferent. <laughs> you know, day one, we were like, here is my best dish. I'm very proud of it. And then today, we're all just like, that's what I got. <laughs> I, I think tomorrow's gonna be another day that might be out of some people's comfort zone. It's gonna be a really stressful day at 4th and State. You guys are gonna be working with me on the line uh, in a kitchen you've never been in, a menu you've never served, and you're gonna be right next to me in prime time, and it's gonna be your job to get things together and get them out to our guests. We've been cooking by ourselves a lot up until this point, but what takes a chef to the next level is can you play with others? Can you direct? Can you keep your ears open? Can you keep your mind in different places? You're gonna need all those skills tomorrow. The final three will be pitching a vegan food business concept on Sunday for the chance to win $10,000. Business mentorship and the title of Top Vegan. Keep those things in mind. Get some rest tonight. Take a deep breath. Another round of applause. Just being here was a win. Everyone was so nice and gracious and Chad is just an awesome guy. Like, probably be my friend for life, to be honest with you. Honestly, it's probably gonna be more challenging. I'm not fixing my own recipes and, um, you know, things that I'm familiar with. I'm excited. Uh, working the line, especially when it's a busy rush, can be fun if you're working with the right people. And I'm excited to work alongside them and Chad.